All right, so it's one o'clock and we'll go ahead and get started. Again, my name is uh, Jamie Hansen and I am a um, ed tech and design instructional specialist for SAISD. Um, I do support, our, this past year I've supported four schools, which were Herf, Bonham, Poe, and Douglas. Had a great time with those schools and I know I'm moving on to some other schools this next year. I have been a teacher for the past 16 years, and I've mainly taught science and math and in fifth and eighth grade. Um, and I've kind of incorporated a lot of uh, tech in, in uh, while I was a teacher. Um, at two years of my teaching experience, I was one-to-one -one device on iPads. And so we did use a lot of different tools that we put in place in the classroom to allow the kids to collaborate. So this is just called intro to collaboration. Um, I've kind of picked five of my favorite tools to kind of show you uh, just the basics of the tools. And so just also keep in mind when, when we're talking about a tour and I'm bringing it up, uh, each tool could have its own training, its own thing. And I know a lot of these tools are being presented here in uh, at our Ready Tech Go. So if you see one that you like, um, I hope it's still available and you can kind of go in the future so you can learn more about that tool. This is pretty much just an introduction into each one that allows some different techniques of, of collaboration. Um, so with SAISD, we do have a vision and mission that says every student will engage in their local and global communities. There's your collaboration piece right there. As emotionally intelligent citizens, creators, critical thinkers, and collaborators, Mission, our mission statement, empower all students and teachers with quality learning experiences and seamless access to digital, physical resources, fostering student-driven real-world learning. I know we might have some outside people from SAISD, but in our district, we do have one-to-one -one device, uh, mostly Chromebooks, but we do have some with, with um, iPads. Uh, we Here's our Future Ready Pathway. This is our program that we're doing, which is uh, one of this is Collaborate to uh, in part of our domain. So that's what this lesson's about. It does fit our, our uh, student standards here. Um, here on the top bullet, it says, you know, digital tools connect with learners, collaboration technologies to work with others, contribute constructively to project teams. Um, so anything collaborative with, with technology is gonna, gonna match your, your standards here. Objective today is to explain collaboration and have access to tools to use in the classroom and learn various ways that students can collaborate. And collaborate means basically to work together on an activity, especially to promote or create something. Now, two, two things to think about when we're talking collaboration, one would be just a local setting where your students are working together on activity within the classroom using technology. Um, another one would be uh, using technology out, uh, for students, say, in the classroom down the hall or in another classroom, another homeroom. And then, of course, you could even go globally with technology nowadays where you're working with students not only from another country, possibly, or another state, um, where you're working together with, that, with those group of students. Um, what, what I did one time teaching fifth grade is one of the TEKS is uh, to understand the phases of the moon. And uh, even in eighth grade too, in science. And what we did was we, we connected with a group of students in China and we connected with a group of students in Australia. And we would write messages to each other because we were on different time zones. And we would post pictures and our observations of the moon uh, to us in that country. So for example, if our kids looked at the moon that night and we saw a full moon, what did China see? Or what did Australia see? And it was important that I picked uh, specifically a country in our Southern hemisphere because there you would find a different moon. So for example, if you saw a waxing crescent um, with the little sliver off on the right, if you were to call China and say, what moon do you see? They would see the same thing, right? Just at a different time or different time of night, different position in the sky maybe, as in the height and, or the angle, but you would still see the exact same moon, but not Australia. Australia would not see that, okay? They would still see the crescent. They would still see the little thing, but they're gonna see it on the right, I mean, on the left side, on the other side. And so our kids, you just kind of let your kids realize that as they're talking back and forth between students, and they would say, well, I see a crescent as well, but it's important to say, is it on the right or the left? 
of the moon because uh, Australia is looking at the moon upside down, right? Because you're being pulled towards the center of the earth, but their body technically is upside down. So, um, and then we would have our kids in the classroom, you know, hang upside down as much as they can to look at, look at a picture of the moon, uh, the position of that. But I thought that was interesting that we did that and to, to kind of compare the moon. All right. So why collaborate? What, what's kind of the point? It says we must prepare our students for change for the changes happening in our world, right? We're in an age of acceleration and now more than ever students must have the skills to be agile, adapt quickly and work together to solve problems because this is the future. This is the things that, that we're, we're moving towards. Here is an error of rapid change that we're noticing. Um, if you look here on the left, the, the evolution of the employee, we have the past idea. This is kind of your grandparents, maybe, or your parents. Uh, and then we have the future. And that might make sense to you. You see the change that we're going for, like work nine to five. I know the school system is still kind of a nine to five gig, but um, in the future now, people are now working from home. They work anytime. I know people are adopting four day work weeks. Um, you can now work from anywhere based on internet and technology devices. Um, we've kind of focused more on the outputs. And in the past, they focus on the inputs and so forth. So things are changing. So as teachers and educators, we have to kind of keep up that change and allow those things to happen within the classroom. All right, so here are the top five. Now there's some, some other tools, but I'm gonna go through some top five tools that I, I think are really good to collaborate in the classroom. The first one we got is Flipgrid. Um, I think Flipgrid's awesome because it, it uses video and I know some kids can be kind of kind of hesitant about being on, on video, but you can also use it for sound. It says Flipgrid is another excellent collaboration tool. Think of Flipgrid as an online discussion. Come to life through video. So it's a super cool program um, that you can use. And then we can turn it into some activities called Meme It, where basically a teacher will give a concept or keyword to a student or a pair of students. Students have to meme out the concept without using any words or sound. So now that's without talking, right? You just use body gestures because you're on camera. And then you guess what it is. So again, this could be done within your classroom on Flipgrid and or, or to other classrooms as well. And then here is a little video clip of what Flipgrid is a little bit about. If you don't know anything about it, here we go. In this digital collaboration video, we will talk about how you can use Flipgrid in a collaborative way. Throughout the video, I will use different examples. These are only meant to model the digital collaboration tools you have at your fingertips. Of course, keep in mind how you can use this for your content area. So for this example, I'm going to start at the end product and then show you how the teacher built it. So this is a collaboration activity in which the students have been reading a text and they will be answering discussion questions based on that text. So this is actually student view right, right here. You can see right here it's titled week one discussion. The question is, choose one question from the week one discussion questions, Google Doc, to answer. Respond to at least two other students. Be sure to respond to at least one classmate. This was actually one that I borrowed from another teacher, so you might change the directions depending on how, how you do it. If you notice, again, I've got the, the cover of the book the teacher added for a nice uh, touch. I've got the directions here, and I have the Google Doc linked right here that when I click, it actually goes to the doc that the teacher has shared with the discussion questions. So the students get to pick one of these and then go back to Flipgrid and answer it. And you notice this is in share only. So I didn't have to make a copy for each student. I didn't have to do any of that. It was just all packaged nicely here on the Flipgrid for me as a student. Let's take a look at how they did that. So over here, I've started the topic. Um, remember that if you need help with the basic how to's of Flipgrid to check out the digital learning page and we've got uh, some great short videos for you. So I'm going to go through this just like I have in any other topic. Give it a title. I've typed my question in here. I've decided on how long I want to give my students to record their response. The video moderation tool, maybe I want to use that, maybe I don't. By turning this on, I as the teacher have to uh, approve any videos that come in before they get posted on the topic for others to see. Sometimes I want to use this, sometimes I don't. It's a choice. This teacher, for a nice little touch, added the picture of the book here. You don't have to if you don't want to. As I move on down, 
for the access control, I'm using student email. Don't forget that it defaults to your domain, but you need to add in the student domain, which is at stu.concord.k12.in.us. If you don't add that in there, then students will not be allowed in. Here is the part where the teacher added in the Google Doc. They just simply created that Google Doc, changed the settings so that it was viewable by anyone at Concord or anyone at Concord with the link. They gave it a title, otherwise it would just be that ugly link that was up there. They, they titled it and they just added it. All of these settings are very similar to how you would normally do it. The one thing that we want to keep in mind is down here under video features, you have on video comments. Since we're using this one in a collaborative way, I want to make sure that I have video comments turned on because I want students to comment on other students. I can play around with some of these other settings if I'd like to see what's happening here, but those that I just showed you are the basic ones. Come on down here, update topic, and you're good to go. I can grab that uh, join code or I can hit share here and share it out to Google Classroom, copy and paste it to my launch page, whatever I want to do with it, just like I have with other flip grids, I can share it. Then I've got it here. I've got my example one here, which we will not be watching. And sorry for my goofy picture, but I wanted to show you as a student now, after I've recorded mine, when I want to go in and respond to someone else's, I have zero responses here. So as a student who's going to respond to this one, I would just click in here, pause that. We don't need to watch that. Scroll on down and I can simply had add a comment here. It's going to be a video comment, but they would record it just like they would on any other um, flip grid. They can record their comments and then they can also see any other comments that are down through here. That's a quick and simple way you can use um, Flipgrid. The other thing to show real fast is if you check out this discovery library, this is all types of things created by other Flipgrid users. So you can go down through here. There are tons of things to use here. This is actually where I pulled that example from. You can type in topic content area anything you want you can use this and copy them into your own library or you can just look for motivation or inspiration rather on how they've used it but again that's how you can easily use flipgrid as a collaborative tool with your students all right i know flipgrid is something a lot of people may may have heard of or even done before so is anyone in this digital collaboration oh, video um... we will talk about how you can use flipgrid has anyone used it and wants to share something that they used it for uh, in the in our little group here? Does anyone anyone have something they want to share about Flipgrid or questions you may have about Flipgrid? Okay, moving on on our second tool that I in this digital collaboration to, video we will talk about is um, Canvas. Now, I know this is this is kind of district-based if you have Canvas, but Canvas does have what's called Studio, and Canvas does have something called Groups. And then number three is really just talk about collaborative, collaborative being collaborative. Um, let me kind of show you um, Canvas Studio real quick on my screen here um, and how to use it. A lot of people don't know that it's there, it's kind of a new feature. I'm logging in here, hold on. So this is one of the, one of the campuses that I have supported, Bonham. And right down at the bottom, right here, you see this icon, hold on. right here called studio okay and so you'd click on there and basically studio is a place where you can take a movie uh, from youtube or you can record it on your screen and then you can submit it to your uh, students as a project and the good thing that you can uh, use studio for i'm going to click into this one this is called the real meaning of MPH, I'm going to go into that one, is you can see your insights. Um, oh, I was hoping I would have some. Hold on, maybe that's not, let me go back. I think I have another one with insights.
Um, I'm looking for insights. Hold on. No, nope, there's no insights on that one either. Uh, let me just point out. So when your students watch it, it will show their name in a graph of when they watched it. It'll show you if they watched the whole thing. It'll show you almost um, every five seconds. It'll show if they paused it, um, if they tried to fast forward. You know how when kids watch a video and they fast forward through it, it will show that they did that. Um, and then you can even add uh, comments. The kids can comment off of the video. So if you have um, any kind of a clip that you want them to watch and make comments and and write about it their ideas you're able to do that and then the best one of the best things i think a studio is you can put questions okay so you can have the video stop and before they advance on it um, they would have to watch questions on on the uh on that video answer true false answer multiple choice Anything like that would get them still engaged on watching that video. But I think the main thing for collaboration would be the, uh, the insights and the, uh, the questions and the comments to keep them collaborative. I thought I had, it does change their language. You can have that. The captions can be in different languages. You can see that. Now this video came from YouTube. Um, it also brings in whatever the YouTube description is, but you can also edit them um in there so canvas itself has a collaborative tool called studio um, videos and there are i don't know if ready tech go has one on studios um, but i've done trainings on them and then there's videos on those as well let me show you on canvas groups though so there is collaborative in canvas called groups and here is a little tutorial on that everyone, I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Canvas Studio to teach your students digitally or virtually. If you've never used Canvas Studio before, you can access it in Launchpad by going to Canvas. On the left hand side, you will scroll down to Studio. What Canvas Studio is, is a recording platform within Canvas, and it has two different options. You are able to use your webcam for a recording, or you can do a screen capture for your recording. What I'm doing right now is a screen capture, but webcam has its benefits. If I'm an art teacher and I'm trying to show my students how to cut something or piece pieces together or something of that nature that they actually need to see me, then I could use the webcam feature. But if I just want them to see my screen and I'm able to do the steps digitally, then that may be a more beneficial way. I like to use it in my own classroom for applications that I use. So how to go on Khan Academy, how to send messages on Canvas, how to complete and submit an assignment on Doc Hub, just things that the students would benefit from and they could continually refer back to it throughout the year if they had forgotten or if I got to new students. But what I'm going to show you today is how you can actually teach a lesson like a flipped classroom utilizing Canvas Studio. So there's two ways. If you come down here in the bottom corner, you'll see Windows Ink Space. And when you click on that, you will see Sketchpad, which is going to be your version of a whiteboard. And so you'll notice at the top it has different tools, so a marker, a pencil, a highlighter, and you'll be able to select the color that you want to use to be able to teach your lesson in that way. Okay, so that's one way that you can utilize the screen capture. Another is also using this ink space. I'm going to open up a PDF that I want to use. So these are my notes for math on dividing by a decimal. And I'm going to go back to my ink space and go to the snip and sketch. When you pull up the snip and sketch, it's taking a snippet of what is on your desktop or what you have pulled open. So since the notes is what I had last opened, that is what it is pulling for. Then I would be able to actually teach my lesson to my students on the steps for dividing by, whoops, I'm writing with a highlighter, um, the steps for dividing by a decimal. So then you can select your color, make sure you're not writing in a highlighter like I did, um, and you can actually work through the examples with them using 
your pen or your stylus to kind of teach them and walk them through step by step so that they can visually see it and hear you just as if it were happening in the classroom. And so those are two different ways that you can actually teach your students using Canvas Studio. Then you save it and upload it to your Canvas page, which I will show you in another video. So that's kind of another example of Campus Studio where you would record your screen and submit it. And then of course you'll have your analytics of the kids watching that. Um, but one I one have, one. this is, um, hold on, hold on. Okay, so another one would be number three we have is Lumio or Smart Lumio. Now, this is also district based. This is our district has purchased Smart Lumio. Um, it tends to tie with Smart Board, but you do not need a Smart Board for Smart Lumio. We all have access to it, it's in our class link. Let me show you that. <clears throat> So if I go into your class link and you're looking around, um, you're going to find it with this little globe here called Smart Learning Suite Teacher. We all have our teacher versions of it, okay? So you don't have to worry about um, buying it or purchasing it. Oh, geez, I got rid of my thing. Hold on. All right, so Smart Lumio. Um, now, Lumio has a feature on there called a shout out. And as the kids log in to it, they can post their ideas. It's kind of like Jamboard that you would get on your Google, but this is in Lumio. And so here is also a video on Shoutout. During a lesson, teachers often want to gain insight into student thinking so they can build upon their ideas. Shout It Out allows students to share prior knowledge, connections, opinions, and ideas from their devices synchronously across all learning environments. For this example, I'm going to show you how to add a Shout It Out activity to see how students feel about a math concept. Once you select the Shout It Out activity, you will have the option to choose randomized or categories. For this example, I'm going to add two categories. I've got this and I have questions. This way, the teacher can also see how the students feel about their work. Because I want to make sure students feel comfortable sharing, I will turn names off, knowing as a teacher, I can go back in later and see who is responsible for each contribution. For this activity, I would like students to respond using text, so I select the radio button next to text. Since I want students to share a single solution in this activity, I will keep the number of submissions to one per student. Finally, I want to add the question at the top of the activity, so I enter it here. When everything looks good, I select Next. Now, I have the option to keep the classic look, or I can upload my own custom images. Today, I want custom images, so I select the custom option, and then Next. I want to browse for images, so I click in the box, and now I have the option to conduct a Bing safe search. In the first box, I want an image that represents being confident. I search for the image and select the image I want to use. Then I select OK and then save. Next, I do the same thing on the other side for students who have questions. Now, as you can see, I have both images for the activity. I select finish, and now the activity is ready to go. Students can connect with their devices and share their response during the lesson. The Shout It Out activity is a great way to capture student voice at any point in a lesson and allows even the quieter students to be active participants. All right, so that's a shout it out with Lumio. And um, I like the thing about that I like is it's really quick to set up. You can get really custom with it with adding the pictures. I like that you can hide the kids' names. 
you can limit how many submissions that they do. Where Jamboard, it's kind of open to everybody all the time and they can submit a lot of different things. Um, and this one kind of limits you and you, you can, or limit the students on that. And then you get your real world feedback on that. And I know some of you have already used Lumio, uh, shout out the feature. Um, anyone wanna share or have questions about Lumio real quick before I move on to number four or something that they've done with it that they really like? All right, moving on then to another tool to use would be just your Google Apps, right? Your Google Apps settings to integrate. You have Google Docs, you have Google Slides and Sheets and Drawings and Forms. And of course you have your Jamboard. Um, Google just in all just allows you to have them work on a Word document together. Again, you don't have to have it limited for just in your classroom. You can limit, you can have them paired with kids from other classrooms, other grade levels, other content areas, or um, other states, other countries. Just with Google Docs, Google Slides alone uh, allows you to work in, in pairs and like that and collaborate and get ideas. Um, and now, the good thing about Google is it can combine with Canvas, which is our district purchase um, learning management system and hyperlink to that. So I think Google or Google Docs is definitely something that to take advantage of when it comes to collaboration. And here's how you can use Google Apps um, and combine it with Canvas groups to allow them to, to work together in their own little workspace. And this is a video made by uh, one of our coordinators here. Okay, so in order to get started with groups, um, you're in your Canvas course and you'll head over to people. And in people, you're gonna see some tabs across the top and to start a new group set, click on group set. And here you can uh, start a new group, um, maybe based on the project that they'll be working on. So um, I'll just say research project. and automatically um, split students into groups. I think the sound on the video muted. Does somebody have a question? Jamie, the sound muted. Oh, the sound's muted? Did you not hear anything? It's Hold on. just at the beginning, just on the video, it muted, not you. Yeah, but play it, it again didn't... and see if it happens. Hold okay. On. Groups and. Did you hear it? It's back. It's back. Okay, thanks. The students were sent into the group randomly okay so you see there and then you see the group leader over here in the middle okay all right now if i want to send the group a collaboration i would click on the three dots and say visit their home page and in their home page they get all of these tools on the left hand side home they can post announcements to their group just to their group. They can create some pages for their group. They can see who's in their group. They can start a discussion to collaborate within the group, post files to the group. And this is not turned on for students. Um, the conferences, maybe one day in the future it will be, but for now it is not. But the cool thing is that you as a teacher can come into their collaboration area. Now they can create a collaboration, but you can as well. And so you can create a collaboration for that group. And here are all the members of the group, okay? And so you just click on their names, they'll go over. 
this just means you want all of them to collaborate um, on either the document, the spreadsheet, or the presentation you want them to work on. So I'm going to click presentation. And I have a presentation here called Choice Board Activities. And students will pick an activity and work within the slides to complete. Each student in the group will work on their own side. Okay, so I could give better instructions, but uh, for now, this is what we're doing. And I just want to get to the part where I show you how the teacher can send them a template. So I'm gonna click on the slides that have now been made for the students. They are blank. Okay, so it's just a collaboration space. It's a space for the students to work, to start working on some Google Sites together. But I have a template that I want them to work on. So how can I, how can I give them that template? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the template that I have, I'm gonna copy the slides, copy, and go back to this one. This is the one that's in that collaboration area for the students and paste, okay? All right. Now, if I wanted to, I could um, type some student instructions here for them as well. But since I put it on the on that other part, I'll go ahead and just delete the slide. So now they have slides here. And um, if there are more than four students, there are four slides here. And really it depended on the activity they wanted to do. So they get to pick the activity so they can duplicate slides. Okay, and work on the type of activity they want to work on because it is a choice board. As long as each student works on their own, uh, they can work as a team together to complete them, but the expectation is still one person um, per slide. So, anyway, that is how to add the template into the collaboration space for the students to work on as a group. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Thanks. Okay, so that's kind of bringing in two tools there where you have your Google Apps, your Google Slides, and you're bringing into Canvas your learning management system in one area and have them collaborate that way in groups um, using Canvas. Do we have any um, questions yet? We're gonna, we have one more tool I wanna show you, but um, any questions or how anyone wanna share any tools that y'all have used? Um, in your classroom yet. Jamie, I just want to give you a 10 minute heads up. Thank I have you. put the link for attendance in the chat and then I'll do it again at the end, but I wanted to let you know, you got one to go, right? Thank you. All right, one more tool I'll share with you. And it kind of doesn't really involve too much technology, but that's okay. You can't always have the kids on the computer, but this is all about just getting them up and this is called the gallery walk. Um, this is something I've seen used mostly with teachers, but I don't see it a whole lot in, in students in the classrooms. And basically you take your big station or your big poster and you set it up around the room and the walls and the tables and small groups of kids will travel around from station to station performing some kind of task or responding to a prompt or whatever will eventually result in conversation. And you can do a digital version. You can do a gallery walk using technology Padlet, Seesaw, Google Slides. It's the same kind of concept with the technology piece around it using the gallery walk. So you can kind of combine them both. But the reason I think one, this is kind of my favorite is it gets the kids up and moving around and talking. Because here's the thing with all kids, whichever grade level you teach, kids really just want to talk and move. That's, their, that's what they want to do. If you don't let them talk and move, they're going to talk and move anyway. And then you're going to find yourself with classroom management problems possibly or some issues that you're not. So in every content area, get them up moving, get them up talking, get them up working together. That's what they want, right? They wanna be with their friends. They wanna talk about ideas. And um, when you allow that to happen, you're gonna get huge success and huge growth within your, within your classroom. So this is just your simple gallery walk. 
um, again, with just poster paper or on the laptop or on the iPad using different kind of digital tools that way too. Um, so I thought uh, five would be kind of enough. I know I have 10 minutes left, but um, here's a video on Gallery Rock real quick. And she does go into it using it for um, technology as well. I'll make sure I don't mute myself now. A great way to get your students thinking on their feet is by using a strategy called a gallery walk. Instead of sitting at their desks and answering questions or falling asleep during a lecture, students visit exhibits that help them answer questions in small groups. This strategy is student-centered rather than lecture-based and gives your students the opportunity to interact with the content. And all you'll need to set up your gallery walk is assigned groups and your walls. Here's an example of a gallery walk that introduces the Greek myth Arachne in a middle school literature class. You can modify the gallery walk for various subjects and grade levels. In this case, the teacher has tasked her students with answering the essential question, how does the story of Arachne explain Greek views of the natural world? To begin the activity, students move in small groups from station to station, responding to pieces of art, text, or graphics. At each exhibit, students explore the essential question using details from their observations, quietly discussing their ideas as they go. Students share their ideas on sticky notes and leave them for peers and other groups to read. After a set amount of time, the teacher directs students to move to the next exhibit. Students then respond to the new text in front of them, being sure not to repeat information that has already been shared on previous sticky notes. When the gallery walk is over, you can choose to have students answer the essential question in a short essay. Encourage the students to use their classmates' input from the sticky notes as supporting evidence of their ideas. Or, if you would prefer, have your students respond in a public speaking assignment. Students could present each exhibit in their small groups, synthesizing the sticky note responses and their own ideas to discuss how each exhibit relates to the essential question. The social mobile aspect of the gallery walk makes this activity fun for your students. What could have been a dull essay assignment becomes a field trip in the comfort of your own classroom. And instead of preparing a lecture that your students may or may not listen to, you can sit back and watch your students teach each other. Now that's student-centered learning. All right, so that is our gallery walk. Um, very productive in the class, very moving around. Um, here, I'll kind of end you on this note. It says, there's no doubt that learning to listen and talk is extremely important a way to broaden knowledge, enhance understanding and build community. Kind of end with that on our collaborative tools. And again, this is just an intro into these tools. Uh, here are some other resources um, that you'll get. Uh, we'll, we'll send you the copy of this slider or it's out here in the district. And if you need to contact us, I'm gonna put my email in the chat real quick, if you need to reach out for anything. Um, if you want a copy of this um, slide, I can email it to you. Um, but this is just an intro. So if you do, I can tell you, looking at some of the things here, um, all of these can be its own training, okay, uh, into Lumio. So our next thing would be at two o'clock, um, I'm just trying to look to see here if any of them match. I know Lumio will be, or is it, it's going on right now um, by Kelly over here. And then tomorrow you can see that we have some sessions also on Lumio from 8.30 to 10.30. If you want to learn more about Lumio, um, see anything else that I went over. Lumio is back in the afternoon. Lumio is over here, uh, Seesaw, Brain Pop. So those are some of the future uh, that you have tomorrow and today that if you wanna join in. But every single one of those Flipgrid and all that was yesterday. But um, if you wanted to learn more about those, you can even go on to our website page and earn these badges for each one. I'll show you that. Well, here's our SAISD technology, go to other PD here, and then you can get a Flipgrid certification here. You can get Google certification, Kami, um, and uh, Screencastify. There we go. Um, so do we have any questions? I guess I'll, about five minutes early. 
But um, any questions on any of these tools that y'all have any questions about or stories that y'all have used before that you like or any kind of other ways y'all collaborate in the classroom that, I'm, that you can share with us? For the gallery walk, do you find it in ClassLink? The gallery walk, um, if you want to use it more of a tool, you could find Seesaw in there or digital tool or your Padlet or Flipgrid would be used as a digital tool to gallery walk. But really the gallery walk would just be more of you getting the kids up and moving and you're putting ideas and sayings around the room that they walk to and add post-it notes to or write on the a butcher paper on other ideas that you can address later to create these discussions in the classroom. Uh, taking that word gallery walk and kind of Google searching it, there's lots of information on ideas and how to do it effectively in your classroom and even giving you some classroom management strategies. But gallery walk, yeah, has been around a long time. I think it's even an avid strategy for, for you to kind of perform in your classroom just to get your kids up and moving and talking. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So um, hopefully this gives you some ideas to get started and to research more in about, because I know there's, I could probably talk and show you two hours worth of each one of those tools, but this was just an intro just to give you some ideas to get you started, so.